In this video, I want to elaborate on a feature that I explored in a previous tutorial. And what I did previously was I created an information box similar to what you see on the screen here. And this box can be an element on the canvas page that has different content on it. And you can scroll down, you can put pictures or text or whatever you want. But what I wanted to do was explore a different feature. And so in this case, I divided the content of this box into sections. And then I have the hyperlinks to the sections right up at the top here. So I can jump from one section to another right on my Canvas page. And then to take that one step further, I wanted to create something of an animation effect as you're scrolling from one section to another. And so you can see in the second box where I have the scroll effect applied, so in the CSS, this is called a scroll behavior, and I want it to be a smooth scroll behavior. And so you can see that animation effect as I'm jumping from one section to another. Let's see one other example of this effect on this canvas page right here. So I'm gonna minimize that, and we're gonna to jump to this box right here where I have the various sections. And I color coded the sections, and then I put hyperlinks to the sections. And so I can jump from one section to another section, and it's a very smooth animated effect. So again, I can do this first interaction just on the canvas page without having to go into the theme editor. In order to put the code in the theme editor, I'm gonna look for some code that's called scroll behavior, and I'm gonna specify it as smooth. And you can call the class whatever you want. I called the class smooth, so then when I want this interaction, I refer to that class of smooth, but you can name it whatever you want. The CSS that you specifically need is you need to define the scroll behavior as smooth. And that gives you this nice animation as opposed to just a jumpy effect. So in order to add the CSS to your institution, you're going to have to go to your administration account. You're going to have to go to the theme editor or work with somebody who has access to the themes in your institution. And then you'll go ahead and edit your theme editor. Once you're there, you're going to click on upload. And if you have a CSS file, you can download that and add the code to the CSS file. And this is specifically the code that you're going to want to add and you can call the class whatever you want. So now let's hop back to this page and let's analyze how I did this, how I got this effect. So you can see here that there's a little bit of code and let's walk through exactly what we're looking at right here. So first of all, I have a div that encompasses the entire thing. So all of this right here is in between the first div and the closing div tab. And this div isn't really important. All I'm doing is adding a shadow. It's aesthetic. I'm floating it to the right so that the text comes to the left. And I put a little bit of margin around it. But the real content is right here in this code. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the header that I created. Now you'd probably really want to do that in something like a nav. You would want to call this nav. But I wanted to call it div. And so that's what I did. I created a div with a background color. And then I put some code display block and put a little bit of padding on the top and the bottom just so that the edge of the box doesn't go right up against the text. And then I centered it and then I put the width of 600 and you can put the width of whatever you want. It could be 100% the width of the page, it could be 200 pixels, 600 pixels, but what you want to make sure is that this div, whatever width you decide to define, then the second div should be the exact same width. So right here I have 600 pixels and 600 pixels. And that way, this element looks like one single element. So the width of the two things, I have the top here, and then I have the bottom, and they're exactly the same. So it looks like one unit. And then the bottom, of course, has the scrolling components. Next, I have three anchors, three hyperlinks here. And you can put the hyperlinks as whatever you want. I put first, second, and third. So the first section, second section, third section. And then I put the color and that's the color of the actual text. So it could be black, it could be white, it could be whatever color you want. And then I put a margin. So on the top and the bottom, I put a margin of zero. And then from the left and the right, I have a margin of two EM. It's similar to pixels, except for it takes the size of the font. And I'm essentially saying I want it double the size of the font. I could also put that as 30 pixels if I wanted left and right. And since these are hyperlinks, I don't want it to be blue text that's underlined. And so I put text decoration, none. And then the important thing is when I click on the word first, then where does it go? And so I put an href and then I put a hashtag first. And that's the ID. That's what I called the ID is first. And down here, I specified that first means that first section. And then you can just copy and paste that line as many times as you want for however many sections that you want. 
and then you would just change the hyperlink for each one and then the words as well that are hyperlinked as well as the words that are hyperlinked. So in my case, I have three different links that I wanted, and so I created three anchors. And then you'll move down and you'll create your scroll box. So in this case, I have a div, and every all of the content is in between this div and that div. And I put a class for the div, which is smooth, and that's gonna give me that smooth transition that we were looking at. And then I specified a background color. I put that display block again, I put a height of 400 pixels and you can put the height as whatever you want. And you're probably gonna have more content than what fits in the box because that's the whole point of us scrolling. So you wanna specify overflow on the Y axis. You want that to scroll and that's gonna give you the scroll box like what we see here. I put text align center, you don't have to do that. And then the width of 600 pixels and that can be whatever width you want and you just wanna make sure that those two widths are the same. Now, if I took out display block, then the text would be at the very top of the element, but I wanted it to be right in the center. So that's why I did display block. So it's right in the middle and then I aligned it in the center. All right, so now I have my sections. I have three sections that I created. The first one I called first, and that's just because that's what I called it up here. And that could be whatever I wanted. I could call it firstly, but the main thing is that whatever I call it down here, I have to call it the same thing up top. Otherwise, when you click on this hyperlink, it's not gonna know where to go. Now, I know I put a background color for the main area, but then I decided for each section, I would just do a unique background color. And so that's what that is right here. You want this code display flex, and then you align the items in the center or however you want to align them. Justification is the same thing. Do you wanna justify the content? In my case, I put a width of 400%. And that's 400% of the 600 pixels. So it's gonna take up the entire width of whatever I specified up here. And then I put the height at 400 pixels as well, which also is the height of the box itself. If you have a lot of content, you may need more height than that. And so I could change that to 600 if I wanted. Once you close out the div, then you can go ahead and copy this div, and then you can specify your sections. And so if you copied and pasted this three times, you'd want to change the ID for each one. And then of course you'd want to change the content. You know, this is the first section. And then I have right here, this is the second section. This is where you'd put your text or your pictures or whatever content that you want. You could even put a YouTube video or Canvas Studio video if you wanted. And so those are my three sections. And then I close the div. And so this is the second box. I have the first box up here. I have the second box. And then I closed out the whole thing. So just for redundancy, let's walk through this code one more time, and this time I'll have the actual box on display on the left so we can see what we're looking at. So first of all, I have a div, I have a class which is shadow one, and that gives me the shadow effect around it, and I have a previous tutorial that talks about how to create that shadow. Also, I put a style float to the right, and that floats it to the right side of the page, and then the text can just wrap around it. And then I put a margin of 30 pixels, which you can see as I highlight the text that it stands out a little bit, 30 pixels. And then when I'm done with the entire interaction, then I close out that div. So that's what we're looking at here. And now let's look at the top part of the box. I put a div, a background color, which is the color that you see right there. I have display block, I have padding. The 15 pixels gives me a little bit of padding on the top and the bottom of the text. And then I have it aligned to the center. And then for this example, before it was 600 pixels, I changed it just now to 350 pixels just so that I can have the interaction side by side without it taking up too much space. So it's a pretty simple box right here. And then I put the elements within the div. So first of all, I have an anchor and the text isn't black, I colored it. And this is the color, the value of that color. Then I put a little bit of margin to the left and the right of each of those words. And you can see that right here. I don't have any margin on the top, but I do have margin on the left and the right. And then I have the text decoration set to none. And that tells me that these are hyperlinks, but they're not blue with the underlined text. You know, I just want it to be undecorated hyperlinks. I have my href and the href is whatever you call it. I know I called it firstly right there, but I'm going to just change that to first href of first. And then I have the word that I want hyperlinked and then you close up the hyperlink. The other two hyperlinks are exactly the same, except for I just changed the href and then I changed the words that are hyperlinked. And so it takes me to a different place on the page and it's a different word. And then you close up that box and that's the gist of the top box right there. For the second box I have right here, 
First of all, I have the class smooth and that gives me the animation effect when I click on it. And then I put a background color. I can put display block. I put a height, 400 pixels, and you can change that. Maybe 400 is too much or too little. This is what 400 pixels looks like on my page. And then I put the overflow Y to scroll. And so I have more content. This is about 1200 pixels of content because I specified each one to be 400 pixels tall, but the whole box is only 400 pixels tall. So I need some room for it to scroll. And that's what I'm doing right here. I put the text alignment to the center and put a width of 350 pixels. And you can also put that width as a percentage. It could be 50% of the page and you could put a max width of maybe 400 pixels, whatever you want. And then I have the content. I have the different sections. Here's the first section, there's the second section, and the third section. And those are right down here. I need to define with an ID what the section is called. And so this ID is first, and then that's the same as the hyperlink up here. And so when I click on this, it'll take me to that first section. And just for the sake of this demonstration, I put a background color. So I put three different background colors. One is kind of a green, one's a reddish color, and then the other is a blue. I lined everything in the middle. I put display flex and items center and justified center. And then I put each section as 100%. So it's 100% of the width of the box and a height of 400 pixels. And then I would put my content. And so that could be images, it could be text, whatever you want. And once I have that section created, I can copy and paste it however many sections I want. And you just change the ID and change the content that's in, within the box. And everything else on this page is just boilerplate text. And so one last time, taking a look at the interaction, I can see the animated interactive elements to the scroll box. And this is the smooth scrolling behavior. So I hope this is something that you can have fun with. You can go ahead and grab the code on my website, howtocanvas.com. I'll give you the code to the interaction that you're seeing on the screen right here. If you think of other applications for the smooth scrolling behavior, then let me know in the comments. And until next time, happy teaching and learning.